Thank you. Hi. My brother-in-law, Nick, died last year. He was a few years younger than me. Nick was one of life's great gift givers. And by that, I mean that Nick would give you his time. When Nick spent time with you, Nick would spend time with you. But you're going to have to trust me that, that Nick was an inspirational teacher. He was an amazing friend, and he was the most incredible dad. Because this isn't going to be a eulogy for Nick. I'm not going to speak to you about all the things that Nick gave. Instead, I'm going to tell you a story about the one and only time I ever saw Nick take something. It was December 2008. I lived in Banstead in Surrey, and Nick was visiting. We'd gone to Banstead High Street for coffee, and we were walking back to my house. As we approached, I could see a wooden box on the doorstep. Now, this was long before the days of Amazon Prime delivery. I know these days, if you get home and there isn't a parcel on the doorstep, you panic. But back then, an unidentified package was still a bomb. <laughs> so we approached with caution. Pick it up, Nick said to me. I said, no. I said, it could be dangerous. You pick it up, Nick. So Nick picked it up. And I took about five steps back. Nick put it to his ear and started to shake it. And I took another five steps back, almost went under a bus. <laughs> then Nick turned around and said, Dan, I think it's fine, let's take it into the house. So I toss the keys to Nick, he goes into the house, and I stay outside, I need to clear the leaves from the drain in the brace position. <laughs> About a minute later, I hear Nick shout, Dan, it's champagne! So I bolt into the house and I find Nick standing there in the kitchen, huge grin on his face, holding up this bottle of Moet champagne like he's just won the Grand Prix. He said, Dan, it looks like it's been hand delivered from Waitrose, but to the wrong address. It's supposed to be for number 52. Now that made perfect sense to me because Waitrose was just around the corner. I'm not showing off, it was. And the chap at number 52 was an alcoholic, so it made sense. <laughs> I've got this vague memory of suggesting to Nick that we take the bottle down to the correct house. But I've got a much clearer memory of searching for champagne glasses. <laughs> I remember Nick said to me, Dan, you're not seriously thinking of keeping it, are you? And I said, well, Nick, if you insist, so fast forward a few hours, it's night time, the pizza's arrived, the Sopranos is on TV, and the champagne is flowing. I'm swigging back my third glass when Nick suddenly decides to feel guilty. He said, Dan, I, do I don't think we should have taken the champagne. I said, Nick, pull yourself together. I said, firstly, this was your idea. <laughs> Secondly, we can't put the champagne back in the bottle. I'm on my third glass. God knows how much you've had. He said, Dan, I haven't had any. I said, and thirdly, it's fine. The chap's going to call Waitrose. They're going to send over another bottle. Nothing can go wrong here. That's when we heard the explosion. The whole house shook. Seconds later, there were hundreds of people running past my front window. So Nick darts outside to try and see what's happening. I go to find my house keys in the brace position. And I follow outside a couple of minutes later. Now, as I turn the corner onto Banstead High Street, the heat hits me, and I can see this ball of flames rising into the sky. So I'm like, what, what happened? What happened? And I'll never forget the horrified look on Nick's face as he turned to me and said, Dan, it's Waitrose. It's gone. It exploded. It did. Now, the, I think the important thing to say here is, as true as this story is, nobody was hurt that night. The store had closed an hour earlier. There was nobody inside at the time. But as I stood there in the middle of Banstead High Street in my dressing gown and slippers, cheesy garlic bread in one hand, champagne flute in the other, I couldn't help but wonder if maybe this had all been Nick's fault. <laughs> was, it, was it just a string of unfortunate events? Was it some cosmic order at play? 
Or did the disgruntled alcoholic at number 52 actually go and blow up Waitrose? Who knows? <laughs> 15 years on, and December the 8th is still marked in Banstead. It's known as the anniversary of the incident. <laughs> if you go online, you'll find videos from the night, and you can even buy a book that was published by a local author called The Great Fire of Banstead. The date that means more to me, though, is September the 3rd, 2022. That's the day that I woke to a phone call to find out that Nick had died in a car accident. Ever since that day, if ever I'm given a glass of champagne, or even if I just see yours lying around, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll raise it to Nick, a man who gave so much and was taken so soon. Thank you.